Okay, so we are live. We are live. Hey, YouTube. <laughs> okay, so hello and welcome to Two Moms and Some Labels. Two Moms and Some Labels is a platform created for families caring for a child with a disability to come together in a shared space and to commune, network, and gain ideas on how to persevere through challenging times. My name is Brittany. I'm Nicole. And we are here today to talk with you all about mental health and self-care and how it is so important in our community to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves mentally, physically, emotionally, um, in all those ways. And being a parent or caregiver of a child with disabilities can be very stressful. It can be um, very just tiring. And, you know, you can feel like you're in it all alone by yourself because, you know, you might not have people, if you, especially if you work like a regular job, you might not have people that you can relate to your situation and what you're going through. And a lot of times as us parents with disabled children, we, our self-care and mental health is, is different than those of, that have typical children. And so we just want to talk a little bit about how our self-care and mental health um, may be different, but how we can still be able to, you know, do those types of things to take care of our minds and our bodies and souls and why it's so important still. And I know sometimes it may feel like you are, um, if you might feel like you're neglecting your child because you, you need a break. Yeah. Um, but that is not the case and it's okay. It's okay to pause for a moment, step away and take care of you because if you aren't taken care of, then it's going to be hard to try to take care of your loved ones. So we want to dive into this topic and um, share some ways for you all to be able to get into some self-care and yes. uh, mental health relief. So, yeah. Nicole, um, what are some ways that you, you know, do self-care or you keep your, your mental clear? Like, what are some things that, that you do? Yeah, so I'm big on self-care and mental health and stuff. So one thing I do that I had to adapt to when I didn't have any nursing and no one was trained to keep Lorenzo, I would walk. Um, it was really the only thing at that time I could do. I would put him in his stroller, hook the suction machine on. If we had to do a feed-in, put the feed-in pump and we would just walk the neighborhood walk through the park. And that was the thing that I felt that I could do and have a clear mind because it's very hard. Um, even when you have nursing, because the nurses, you feel like, oh, they're looking at you like, oh, you're going out to do this when you should be taking care of your child. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you don't even feel comfortable leaving because people put that guilt trip. Oh, how could you leave? And how could you go do this? So walking was my self-care thing at that moment. Um, and now Lorenzo's older and he's uh, more stable and more independent. I really take, um, the time while he's at school or was at daycare to really do as much for me as I can. So I take advantage of my lunch breaks, my, um, 15 minute breaks at work, um, and really try to hone in on what I need to do for myself. And then I really utilize PTO um, is my best friend. PTO. I don't just utilize it for to take him to appointments. I utilize it for me. And that's what really helps. So what are some things you do for self-care? So, you know, even before I just get into that, I think that is so like good that you brought that up about the guilt trip. I, I feel like there have been so many times where I did feel like Especially if, you know, I guess just with anybody, not even just the younger person, I was going to say like a younger caregiver or nurse, but um, especially just when I want to go and do something nice for myself, get my 
feet done or just relax, you know, or go work out without, you know, the kids and stuff. And you, you just have this feeling that the person caring for your child is thinking to themselves, like, well, I know she is not about to go and do this and I'm here and, no child. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, like I, I have my own family of my own and I have stuff I need to do. But then again, it's like you signed up to, you know, do this as a job. So, you know, it's, it's a relief. It's not, you know, here for me, me to assist you. Like Correct. it's, the time for me to step away and, mm -hmm. you know, you take over for this, you know, little amount of time so that I can be able to just breathe for a moment. But I definitely have felt that, that guilty feeling mm -hmm. like I should not be doing this. I need to just be sitting here with my child and the caregiver in case something happens or mm -hmm. she needs something or, you know, she or he needs something and I, I should not. Right. Not to interrupt you, but you know what really helped me get past that part? I had to look at my friend circle of moms of typical kids. I'm like, they go get their hair done. They go get their nails done. They go get their feet done. Um, and they're still, you know, they work full time. So they still find someone to watch their child. So that helped me, you know, more so get over that guilt trip. Because like you said before, for me to be the best for my child, I have to be the best me. So that's what kind of made me realize, OK, well, I do have the right to go ahead and do this. I'm not, you know, jet setting for 30 days. Right. You know, it's just three hours. So I mentally had to get myself in that headspace. And it took me a while. I'll say um, it probably took me almost till Lorenzo was three to four to kind of really get myself together and say, you know what? I deserve to take this time for me um, because before I'd be like, Oh, no, I'm not going to do this. You know, oh, I won't do that. I wouldn't get my nails and toes done at the same time because I felt like I was gone too long. Right. I would go to the gym and maybe stay 45 minutes because, you know, we can't, even though they have childcare at the gyms, we can't yeah. take our children. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. They, you know, they don't have a trained nursing staff. Mm -hmm. Even so, children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we can't. I know some churches, they have, you know, accommodated for mm -hmm. uh, special needs, but you know, there's still, there's still no nursing staff. Right. So there, there is a lot of places I never even thought about that too, going to the gym that we can't utilize the, mm -hmm. the daycare or care center that they have right. for the children because our children, you know, have different needs mm -hmm. that have to be addressed. Mm -hmm. But also, just going back a little bit, talking about how I do uh, self-care or take time for myself, like you were saying before, it took me a long time also. And I want to say that I probably really just started trying to do things for myself, maybe let's, it's 2022, so maybe 2017. Okay. And, and my daughter is 12. Okay. So yeah, maybe 2017, 2018. And it was, it was very hard because mm -hmm. for those, those first seven, eight years of her life, like I, I just, I couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. I, I felt like I had to be there in case something happened. <laughs> you know, or just not entrusting in someone or even we have the care set, but they don't show up. They call mm -hmm. out, you know, they need to leave early. Mm -hmm. They don't, you know, there's no staff in for your child or it was just so many different excuses. So it was just like, I might as well be here. And I did have to, I lost a lot of jobs that way are not, you know, wasn't able to actually be able to stay on a job for mm -hmm. like longer than a year or two because there was always appointments. There was always mm -hmm. a surgery or procedure that needed to be done. Mm -hmm. She was, she was sick. So mm -hmm. she couldn't go back to school or to daycare mm -hmm. or she needed to go to therapy somewhere. So, you know, the jobs give you FMLA, but that doesn't mean that they still won't try to find a way to, get you off the job somehow just because you have FMLA 
And then the FMLA is unpaid. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, what am I working for? If I haven't missed all these days, I'm Mm -hmm. not even getting paid for missing all of these days. So I might as well just be at home with my child taking care of them and not worrying about a new stranger coming in, uh, you know, and I have to be over them like a hawk trying to make sure that they are doing what they need to do and caring for my child the way that I would care for them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's another thing, just you got to, you get somebody new to care for your child. Mm -hmm. Then you got to make sure that you are comfortable with them first. And then you might have to train them and Mm -hmm. that, that can take a while. Like I'm not going to just leave my child with somebody after just a, a couple weeks you know, it might take a couple mm-hmm. months for me okay. to actually feel comfortable leaving them with someone. Especially when our children cannot communicate good touch, bad yeah. touch. Um, oh, someone hurt me. Oh, someone, you know, we have to look our children up and down, pat them down, move a limb, look at their eyes to see how they react to us moving it. Um, so it's very scary just to leave your child with anyone. Um you know, I know certain places they do offer like respite care um, for if you do want to have like a date night or anything like that. Some um, I know some nonprofits do offer that. Me, myself, I've never utilized that um, respite care and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Have you ever utilized respite care? So I have never even I've heard of places doing that, but I'm mm-hmm. not sure if in our local area. There are places, especially for kids like my child, because she is, you know, in a wheelchair, the feeding tube, nonverbal, it's total care. So mm-hmm. most of the places that I have heard of, like the the ARC, I believe, or something like that, mm-hmm. they may, may have a program and I feel like it's more of kids that are disabled, but they are able to do a little bit more for themselves. So mm-hmm. they maybe can walk or they might can talk, but they're kind of more independent a little bit. They need some assistance, mm-hmm. but they're a little bit more independent. And and then there is the gym called Sensory Town that they do like parents night out. And I believe mm-hmm. that she takes in some some kids with disabilities also so that parents can have a couple hours to, to themselves. Right. But I'm not sure. Yeah. Our part of um, with Lorenzo, cause I love to honestly drop him off at one of those places, but unfortunately he just doesn't do well in those type of new mm-hmm. environments without a familiar face. So I know it would just be, just harder to even sometimes do stuff like that. Um, I think that's great for parents. Um, I believe that's more too for like parents with maybe um, autistic children mm-hmm. that just might need a little bit of a breather for, but not, cause I know there's different types of disabilities as far as like your medical mm-hmm. disabilities and then like more behavioral. So like, I know you were saying your daughter has a feed into, you know, Lorenzo has that. So they need more nursing care than Mm -hmm. just the CNA. They need a CNA nursing care, more like medical care than um, a behavioral health type. That's why I think the difference is too with a lot of programs that they offer. There's no medical because even Mm -hmm. some of the churches that do have the area, it's more for, um, there's no nurse. So if the G2 comes out, I still, I'm still in a panic. And those type of things, because nobody knows how to, they just, you know, I'll be in the building so they could call me, but it's still kind of nerve wracking. Right. It's and um, even, you know, with the the schooling also, a lot of times our kids, they can't go to certain programs mm-hmm. because they have the feeding tube and that feeding tube, it requires that the child needs to have nursing care. And not just anybody is supposed to be able to access it. So that is another thing too with the with the feeding tube. And then also that is another thing to think about too, you know, that you mentioned with taking your child to a new place and 
it's unfamiliar to them. The people are unfamiliar. And, you know, with a typical child, you probably can just drop them off and they might cry at first. You know, you have it when your child goes to daycare and they're screaming and yelling and kicking because they're used to being with mom and dad or whoever is taking care of them. But eventually they'll, you know, get adjusted and, and get over it. But for a child that can't even verbalize their their um, their needs or their feelings, it, it's a whole different thing. And then it's just like sensory also mm-hmm. can affect them also in that environment. So you have to take to account that. Yeah. Um, so because a lot of times the kids, they might need some headphones because the environment might be too loud mm-hmm. or they might need some type of compression on them also because you know they just need something to to feel like they can it can calm them like a big hug like a big squeeze all the time mm-hmm. so it's, it's several different factors and that play you know play a role in the different respite facilities or mm-hmm. care places that you can drop your kids off in wow. but also talking about the self care for me I I started to, I mean, I, I go and get my uh, pedicure. I'm not really so much into manicures, but I like to, you know, get a facial or um, just even going to like Starbucks and sitting in there and trying to get some work done or reading a book or just sitting down and having the time to myself where there is, I don't have to worry about lifting up my child or Mm -hmm. because she's having a moment and she's screaming and yelling and I I can just breathe and have that time and taking a walk. I definitely feel like that is something that I enjoy doing also just to clear my head. And recently I have found that I like cutting the yard. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) it's, uh, I'm like, it's, it's weird, but because like, awesome. it's too hot. Yeah, like it's too hot, especially being in Florida to be outside and doing that. I mean, I try to wait till it's cooler to do it, but I I'm not feel like a little peace. I'm outside and it's just it's it's quiet besides the lawnmower going, but I feel like I'm getting exercised at the same time. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm just I feel like I'm just, you know, in my own zone, getting some work done. I feel like I'm getting something accomplished, but I'm also able to like breathe and think, you know, about things while I'm cutting the yard. So Mm -hmm. I have found that to be something that I like to do also to be able to clear my head a little bit. And sometimes I get to have some girl trips and, and stuff like that. So I know that it's hard for women or parents that are, Mm -hmm. you know, single moms and they don't maybe have family or what have you around to assist with taking care of Mm -hmm. their, their child uh, that has special needs. So that can be hard, but luckily, you know, I do have a partner here with me that I am able to take some breaks And so I've been able to go on a couple trips, you know, just for like two, two days, you know, just for like the weekend, I can be able to go out and and do something away with some girls and get away from the kids for a little bit. That's good. Yeah. Clear our minds. We need that. Yes. Yeah. So then, you know, the other side of that kicks in when you do have a partner, but you guys can't really do anything together because Mm -hmm. you don't have a a babysitter or caregiver to watch the kids for you guys. So, you know, I would like to do more things with my partner, but, you know, finding someone to trust and um, take care of our our kids is it's kind of hard when especially when you have your child with you know mm-hmm. some extra needs right. there so that's the only thing about that and but one time I did have a caregiver and it was an older lady and she okay. she was so nice 
And I, oh, I wish yeah. we still had her, but she oh, was like, that. it was the first time, you know, that we ever got to go and do something without the kids for three days. Oh, we wow. Went, yeah. We went on a cruise nice. for, for three days and that was really nice being able to get away and spend mm-hmm. some alone time together without the kids and knowing that somebody was at the house that we could trust. Right. And she had been with us for, I think about two years before we even, you know, did that because like I was saying before, we can't just, you know, find somebody and be like, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I trust you enough after a month or so, or even uh, six months to go off to the Bahamas and you, care for my child no right you and know. then too you have to think about it like you're you're not having someone care for your child in the family this is someone outside the family who has their own family their own issues so while you're out of town mm-hmm. god forbid something happens to their family and their issues and now they got to go handle them it's not like they can call auntie or cousin or someone because now they're not trained for your child So it still gives you that nerve wreck, like, okay, should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? And then, you know, a lot of times we try to plan as much as we can, Mm -hmm. but we know sickness, call outs, and everything can change things just like that, you know? Um, So that's the hard part about traveling, I feel, is um, even doing anything self-care. Simple things is buying a ticket to a concert. You have it all planned out. You have the nurse and da da da, and then the nurse calls out, and you're just like, "Whoa, okay, hundred and fifty dollars yes. down the drain." You know, you yeah. and friend looking at each other like, you know, um. So that's uh-huh. the type of things, and I think with this whole situation, just realizing, you know, my son's five now, just more so, minute by minute, enjoy it, enjoy every moment because. We have really learned in this world of special needs, medically complex, things can change so fast. We've seen it. Our kids can be good one day and the next day, you know, we're rushing to the ER. So we even see it with our kids. So it's just like, enjoy it. If you're able to go do something, do it. Even if you put your kid to bed and you just go sit on the couch for like 10 minutes just to kind of get your mind, you know, even if you go ahead and invest on Amazon a Walmart, a foot spa, and just mm-hmm. soak your feet, even yeah. if you're sitting bedside with the massage and the bubble, sitting bedside to your child. You don't always have to go do something. Because I know for the first really two years, if I wasn't at work, I was right there with Lorenzo. So I get not wanting to leave. Um, but still, there's things, especially, you know, that you can incorporate in the house. I have become a fan of, I love working out. I love weightlifting. But yoga, when I say that has changed just everything, and um, I haven't been to a yoga class in probably about four weeks because I'm working a different schedule now, but I've been utilizing YouTube, and Mm -hmm. I'll put my yoga mat out and deep stretching in yoga mentally. I did not know how um, important it is to just stretch your body, move, because sometimes you got to think about it. We sit a lot. Um, we're sitting by our child's bed, especially if you're in the hospital, um, inpatient. You're sitting a lot. Mm-hmm. You're not moving at home. When we are the nurse and the caregiver because we don't have anyone else. Many a times we're sitting by our child's bed for like 12, 13 hours just to go and warm up food and go to the restroom. So just stretching and moving because like you said, we have to be good. So mm-hmm. I found yoga has been, oh, I love it. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I want to do, I want to do yoga. Ooh. I've been thinking about that. Yeah. It is um, so, oh, I love just how you feel your body breathe. And it's like it just open. Oh, it's so, yes, I love it. Yeah, I'm going to have to try that. Yes. And then, um, oh, yeah, you were talking about the, like the last minute cancellations and stuff like that. I remember when my daughter, she was maybe like three or four and me and her dad, we went to Orlando and my mom had watched, was watching her for us. Okay. And so we literally got to Orlando. We left 
uh, maybe that afternoon. And I swear to you not, like we got to Orlando, we maybe ate dinner and it was like 10 o'clock at night. And my mom, she calls and she was like, um, Ayana's G tube came out and I don't know how to put it back in. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we're all the way in Orlando. I'm trying to direct her on how to put the G tube back in. And she she just couldn't get. I was like, okay, well, you gotta just take her to the emergency room so that they can put her G tube back in. And so she takes her to the emergency room. They put the G tube back in, but she has pneumonia. Oh no. And I'm like, what? So we had to drive back that night back to Jacksonville because we had to be there for her. Right. So it's just little things, you know, like that, that you try to enjoy, but you do have to try to make the most out of what you have and um, definitely doing little small things. I know for a lot of us parents that have children that are disabled, that sleep is a big, um, you know, factor because a lot of times our kids, they, they don't sleep. They have trouble sleeping mm -hmm. because a lot of times th just that part in their brain that was affected is has to deal with sleep. So we are not able to get the, what, seven, eight hours of sleep that they recommend for us to get in order for everybody to feel relaxed and your brain to be clear mm -hmm. and what have you. We're not able to do that because our children, they have trouble sleeping and we and have went, not even just trouble sleeping, yeah. the feeding schedule. Like I know Lorenzo still receives food at 12 AM and 4 AM. Okay. So that, and then, you know, mm -hmm. many of our kids are on medication throughout the night. So if that nurse calls out, you don't, you know, you are going to be given meds and food at night. And if you go to work the next morning or not even have to go to work the next morning, if you have other children, you have a spouse or anyone, mm -hmm. you need to be up and alert to just function. Yeah. You're not going to get any sleep. Um, I have just come to terms. My new job schedule now is from nine to five thirty. Lorenzo is in school. Um, so I drop him off in the morning. My mom picks him up because of um, he, there's no after school program for him. Mm -hmm. um, so I get up at 430, you know, do the feeding and I usually go to sleep around 1130, 12. And I've been doing that now for a minute. So we just I think our body just adapts to it. And that's another reason why self care is really important when you can take those breaks, get those naps. And then when I have realized what we eat, like um, I know me personally, um, when he was in a lot of therapy, I found myself as the drive through queen. Oh, yeah. Um, yes. I was like, I'm not going to go home and cook um, because trying to stand in the kitchen. And this is when he was on a ventilator and everything. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he wasn't in the kitchen with me. So he's in the room. The nurse calls out. Yeah, there's no cooking today because I got to be in the room with him. Casey yeah. cough, suction or anything like that. So I became a drive-through queen. Um, and I noticed myself just getting bigger, mm. getting more uncomfortable. And then, you know, too, with COVID and everything like that. So that's why I have really embraced just working out and really watching what we eat, um, making sure we take our vitamins. Uh, we make sure our kids have the best vitamins um, and everything. But then we lack ourselves, you know looking up the food and the vitamins that give you natural energy is great. Um, so I have even cut back on, I was a coffee queen too. Mm. Dunkin' Starbucks about three to four times a day and maybe probably oh two K-cups mm. at home. Now I'm on one cup of coffee a day. Wow. Um, so just doing those different things and realizing what you can do where you actually don't have to leave the house. I'm a person who another thing I love to do is I love to go to the grocery store in Walgreens. Like that is my mental place. Even if I bring Lorenzo with me, it's just somewhere of couponing, looking at all the fresh fruit and sales. It helps me mentally. So that's something else I find myself enjoying on my Saturday nights or Sunday mornings, Walgreens. 
you'll find me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I know a lot of times they have some good little clearance sales yes. in there also too, especially after Christmas. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm like, ooh, getting the oh, little toys yes. and everything. They have stuff on sale. And laundry detergent. But yes. And you get cash when you shop there. That's why I like it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Shout out to Walgreens. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, definitely, you know, it's it can be so hard trying to find that time for us to get to ourselves, especially when we feel like we have been sleep deprived, mm-hmm. we're just mentally drained, and we don't have any assistance, we don't have a caregiver for days, months, or you know, at night, and the feeding schedule is all crazy, the medicine medication schedule. You know, is all diapers changing diapers yeah. throughout the night. Yeah. So it can be, you know, very frustrating and exhausting, but we do have to find just even if it's a little window of time, like even 10 minutes or mm-hmm. 15 minutes, you know, like Nicole was saying, to just sit down on the couch mm-hmm. and just sit down and breathe. Yeah. You know, even if you turn on a show that you like for those 15 minutes and just look at that. Or if you like reading a book or doing a crossword puzzle or um, like Nicole said, buy one of the little foot pedicure spa things Mm -hmm. at home. I know sometimes I buy the little uh, foot packet things Mm -hmm. that they have at Target or Walmart and then you can put your little feet in it and then it gets your feet all soft and stuff. Sometimes I do that because I can't make it to the uh, salon to get a pedicure. So, you know, just doing things like that for yourself, Mm -hmm. maybe listening to a podcast Mm -hmm. for a couple minutes or um, listening to some music. I feel music to be very therapeutic Mm -hmm. Therapeutic, for me. So I do like to turn on the music if I'm taking my bath or, you know, cooking dinner or something. I just turn on the music for a little bit. And I find that to be something that's soothing and, um, you know, just giving me a little peace of mind. And another good thing is journaling. Oh, yeah. Journaling is really good. Um, Just to give you mental clarity, it might not be as much of your little self-care, but it is that time for you. And then you can just release it all, write it down, what happened that day. Um, You can write it down before you go to bed um, and you can journal in the morning of the positive things you want to happen throughout the day. Mm -hmm. But release all that stuff at the end of the day so you can, even if you're only going to get those two hours, four hours of sleep, you can go clear because you know when you wake up, you're starting over. The nurse called out. Okay, she called out. What are you going to do about it? You're going to either switch agencies. You're going to have a talk with the DON. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do to change it? But you're not going to keep carrying the stress of it. Um, so just writing everything down, your child's medicine change. You're noticing different things. You know, we take a lot of notes on our children, but do we take notes about ourselves, how we're feeling that day? What made us feel this way? How can we change it? Um, Like I said, write down what you eat so you can go ahead and say, you know what? I ate a lot of fried chicken the last two days and I'm feeling very sluggish and my mood is bad. Um, A lot of the food we eat predicts our moods, helps, you know, our balance and stuff like that. So just really journaling, writing down, paying attention to you. Um, A lot of times we get so caught up and we forget who we are as women and as a mom. Yeah. Um, and that is very, very important. Making sure you still know, not that you just feel sexy, you know you're sexy, you know you're worthy, You, um, your mind is clear, you're just going to get up every day and you're going to do it. And it's okay to have your moments of feeling like, whew, I'm about to give up. But that's why it's good to yeah. tune to podcast, um, listen to positive things, surround yourself with other medical mamas so you can go ahead and lean on them because they truly understand. Um, A lot of people will tell me, oh, you know, he's just going through a toddler phase. And I'm like, well, we're five now and no one really understands but another medical mama how it is to bend over and change a five-year-old's diaper. Um, It's not Mm -hmm. the back and everything. Trying to feel it. No one but another medical mama knows how it is to bathe a medical 
child, making sure they don't lean the wrong way in the water. So you're still bending over at the tub and everything like that. So your body is get feeling that wear and tear. So just that's why I said the yoga was it has been amazing for me to even just have that mobility to move better for Lorenzo. So just doing those things and making sure you just keep yourself, your children come first, but make sure you put yourself first as well um, and take care of yourself, man. And it doesn't always have to be about going out and spending a lot of money because I think yeah. that too gets confusing because we all know the struggles of the income we have to make to be able right. to qualify for this and do that. So a mm -hmm. lot of us don't have the extra money to go do this, that, and the other. So it's the best way. I know I'm a person who honestly, I love to get my nails done, but when times I went ahead and bought me a nail kit and learned how to fill my own nails. So I didn't have to go out and spend cause I don't have the coins like that. You know, it is what it is. Um, buying the foot spot, like buying the foot mask from the different stores, taking those little things, um, going to Dollar Tree and balling out. I feel like I got stacks on stacks when I'm in Dollar Tree. Like, <laughs> yes, we in here. But doing those things, balling on a budget. So, yes. So I know that's a big thing, too, with the men. I don't have the money to do it and stuff like that. Um, if you can, if you have a daytime nurse, if your child goes to daycare, Instead of trying to go out to dinner with your spouse, go do lunch, you know, go do breakfast. Those meals are cheaper and yeah. just have to plan and be creative. You, If you both work, utilize, set up PTO together. Hey, baby, you sign up to take off this day. You take off this day. You yeah. got to utilize. If you know you don't have night nursing, you got to do stuff during the day. If you know your child's taking care of during the day, you just got to think outside the box. Definitely. I agree with you on all those things. Those are some great ideas. And then also too, you know, like she said, you don't have to go spend any money. Go grab your favorite lipstick. Go put on your lipstick in the morning. Go put on your lipstick in the middle of the day. If that is going to give you some type of energy or make you feel like you are beautiful and you're doing something or you know, just change your mood. If you just put on some lipstick, even if you're not going anywhere, put on your lashes or, mm -hmm. you know, do something, put your hair up real nice or put on a cute outfit just to stay at home. It's okay. You know, yeah. what they say, the Netflix and chill, you know, y'all can have a Netflix and chill mm -hmm. day when the kids finally do go to sleep Yeah, and just watch a movie, maybe make a little um, get a little towel or blanket and put it down and have a, a glass of wine or something like that if you drink or, you know, just sit down and have a nice dinner with each other, even if it's on your living room floor, you know, it's, it's fine. Um, Got to be creative. Yeah. yeah. So there's so many things that you can do and it doesn't have to cost money. It doesn't have to take up a lot of your time. It doesn't have to take a lot of time away from your child. You know, mm -hmm. if you feel like you need to be there with your child all the time, but you do need to make sure that you are taking at least a little bit of that time away to yourself to clear your mind so that you can be mentally free and clear because, you know, we want for everybody to be in a good space and not feel like you're just drowning in caring for your, your loved one. So yeah. that is definitely important. And, and definitely if you don't take care of yourself, you're going to end up pushing people away. Whether yeah. it's your significant other, whether it's your family, because if you're always like, oh, well, I can't do that because I got blah, blah, blah. Or I can't. People are going to start stop asking you. And then you're going to go into this whole mood of locking yourself in. Um, your spouse is going to go do their own thing because they don't even know how to connect with you anymore you know, um, this is, this is our life. You know, this is what it is. God blessed us with these miracles and we have to adapt to them, taking care of ourselves, spreading love to our significant others. Um, I know for the first three years, if you did not like, it was crazy, but if you're telling me something about this, I'm going back to, well, Lorenzo has to do this and do this and we got to do this. And it just always, if you asked about me, I gave you about Lorenzo. If you, um, 
mentioned what you were doing instead of me telling you what I'm doing, I talked about Lorenzo. Yeah. And that's something that we're so used to because when we go to doctor's appointments, we talk about our kids. When we go to the therapies, we talk about our kids. When we go to evals, we talk about our kids. So now when we're in our friend circle, we're talking about which people talk about their kids, but we get all medical on them. Oh, we have to, you know, his food is going up 40 mLs per hour, da, da, da. You know, and it just can be overwhelming. So sometimes you just got to still be mom, but take off the nurse's hat for a little bit and just relax and breathe and have that moment of normalcy because yeah. you will push everyone away. Yeah. And so um, it's definitely important that if you, you know, need to take a break or you're feeling like you are just, you know, drowning and going under and you are not seeing the the light at the end of the tunnel, that you definitely make sure that you reach out to a medical professional. There are many hotlines available out there. I think they just started like a, I forgot what number you're supposed to call. Um, I don't think it's 411, but they just made it uh, where you can call a number, you mm. know, like how you call 911, you can call that a number if you are having a, you know, mental crisis or mental breakdown. So I'll have to look into that and give you guys that information as well. But they did add that as a hotline for people That's that are good. going through um, mental breakdowns. And then also, you know, if your child needs assistance, you know, behaviorally, or maybe some type of um, medication that they need, or, you need to get an evaluation regarding that to help you a little bit, you know, don't feel guilty about that because I know we have been through so many different sleep medications because it was to the point where I was like, if I don't get any sleep, then I don't know how I'm going to function as a mother for my, my kids. And, and my, like, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Like mm -hmm. it just got so, so bad. And so I, I felt bad at first that I was, putting my child on this medication because it was kind of like, is it for me or is it for her? Is it for both mm -hmm. of us? Is it, you know, and I, I just, I had to make that decision. And um, I think it was one of the best decisions that I, I made, even though we've been through almost every sleep medication that there probably is. We finally found one that works um, decently. I mean, I still get up about three or four in the morning, but it's better than staying up all night or, mm -hmm. you know, getting up in intervals, but definitely, you know, if that's the decision you have to make, that's something that you mm -hmm. have to think about. Well, there's options out there. There's cool. behavioral therapy, talk to the neurologist um, about the different medications that may be available to try to assist with any behaviors if you know you are more holistic and you don't believe in the medications, then they have the natural medicines. Mm -hmm. They definitely have where you can do the medical marijuana or CBD oil. Mm -hmm. Also, if that's something that you feel like would be uh, beneficial to your child or even yourself and you don't have to feel guilty about it. You don't have to feel guilty about making a decision um, you know, for your, your mental health and for your child's needs. So definitely make sure that if, if you're having a breakdown, reach out, call a friend, don't wait until the last minute, just, you know, let them know how you're feeling. Make sure you have someone that you can call and talk to and just vent to, and they're not going to judge you about mm -hmm. how you're feeling and that they can relate to you. So, you know, make sure you have somebody positive in your corner that's going to uplift you and be able to just be a listening ear because sometimes that's all we need. We just need a listening ear to vent about everything that, mm -hmm. you know, we're going through. And so, um, again, just make sure that you're reaching out if you need right. help, okay? Um, and we'll go ahead and put... Um, once we come out with the website and stuff, you'll be able to go on there and find some different resources. We'll yeah. post that number and everything like that, because we really want you to understand that, you know, you can talk to someone. I know sometimes in this role as a mom of a medically complex child, 
you're scared to talk to someone because you don't want someone to say, oh, well, it's too much for her. We're going to remove the child. Yes, um, at the end of the day, you know, you're not saying it's too much. You just need a break that moment. And before it gets too bad where you do end up putting yourself in a position where you could lose your child, it's best to reach out to someone. And that's why it's best to really through these years, start now if you haven't, but start building that community of other medically complex moms, um, ones you can really build and get close with, uh, find a cousin, your best friend, you know, that close an auntie, your mom, someone that can just understand that when you come to them and you're telling them, look, you're not talking about your child, but you're actually talking about you. I'm tired. I need a break. I'm calling out for help. Um, I'm overwhelmed. Can you know? And then don't be scared to ask for help. A lot of medical moms feel like they shouldn't ask for help. So they sit there and they suffer in silence. Yeah. If you can't go to the grocery store, I'm sure there's a circle of people around you. They have to go to the grocery store. It's okay to say, hey, I'm not able to get out the house right now. Are you able to pick up some things? Because I know Instacart costs a lot more money. I, you know, delivery fees. And when you're yeah. on a fixed income, whatever it is, I can understand it can be hard. But don't be scared to ask someone. People don't know what my mom used to always say, a closed mouth doesn't get fed. Yeah. So don't sit there and suffer in silence. You know, I know at one point I used to feel like I couldn't ask anyone for anything because they would be working. And I felt like even though I was running to therapy, not getting sleep, I knew what I was carrying. But maybe people on the outside be like, well, she just be home with her baby all day because they didn't fully understand what my baby entailed, you know, throughout the day. Um, so I would feel like, oh, I can't ask them to go to the store yeah. to get formula or get this because it's just so hard to get him out the house and get to the store. So I would just sit there and try to struggle and figure out a way of when we can go to the store where it's not going to be a lot of people because of germs, just different things. When all I had to do was just ask somebody. So mm -hmm. just make sure you utilize your voice and ask if you need help with something. Yeah. And so I, I hope you guys are able to take away a lot of um, different things that you can do to take care of yourself, um, again, mentally, physically, mm -hmm. emotionally. And we definitely will be posting a lot of this information um, mm -hmm. on our website when we get that up and running. And we want you to remember that Two Moms and Some Labels is a place for us all to come together and just discuss challenges that we may be going through or even discuss, um, you know, some, some um, things that we have accomplished as well and, and persevered through while raising a child with special needs. So we want to thank you guys so much you. for joining us yeah. this evening yeah. and uh, listening to us. And we hope that you can relate to what we've discussed and we cannot wait to see you on our next episode. So thank you again for joining us and we will see you guys on the next episode of two moms and some labels. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>